Hello all, this is Sandeep. Last week I made a video on uh, penalized linear regression or regularized linear regression and how to create one uh, using Python and as well as using Azure ML Studio. And you can find it on my blog at uh, powerbi.com and then you can, I just made a video as well as um, add some code in there. Um, today what I wanted to do was uh, make a quick video on getting a more, um, a more intuitive understanding as to why uh, regularization works and how it works. So in linear regression as an example, our goal is to find a line um, that minimizes the, the, the sum of the squares. So for example, uh, these pink blue dots over here, um, these, are our, uh, uh, these are our observed cases. And we want to find or fit a line that can predict these uh, points. And the way we do that is calculate this, the errors. Um, and errors in this case would be just the vertical distance between a line um, and the, the observed point. And then we square them and you can think of them as these little squares and this is exactly what we are doing. So we are calculating these squares for each of these observations and then we want to find a line that will minimize the sum of these all these squares. And when we say we want to uh, uh, get a, a linear uh, model or a linear regression model is essentially we are calculating these weights. So you can think of linear regression as weighted sum of all the features. So Y is our predictor variable, um, uh, the target variable and X1, X2 are our predictors. And we want to find these weights uh, to uh, and then to sum them up so that we can predict Y. So, this is the, so again, all we are doing is find the minimizing the sum of these squares and find these weights. Now, linear regression is good. But, and again, why, why it's called linear regression is because of this additive factor. We are adding all these uh, predictor variables together uh, to uh, predict our target variable. It is not because uh, we don't have any power term with X or, you know, anything else. We, it could very well be, you know, W1 times sine of X uh, or tan of X and it will still uh, work the same way. So the reason why um, the, uh, linear regression is a problem is a couple of things. First, in linear regression, we assume that um, all our uh, predictor variables or features are uncorrelated with each other. If they are correlated with each other, um, then what happens is these factors or these weights, uh, W1, W2, or on this slide, I'm calling them as B, um, but these become inflated, um, they become very uh, large. Um, and uh, if as the model complexity increases, so as I show over here, we could create a more complex model uh, to, to fit our data. So in this example, we have y is equal to b0 plus b1 times x1 plus b2 times x1 square. So clearly there is a quadratic relationship here and we can capture that by using the linear regression but using higher polynomial uh, term. So we are just um, getting a square of the x1 term um, here, x1 term over here. And again, this is not a, uh, well, this is still linear regression because we are adding all the terms together. As we start adding these uh, polynomial terms, as you can see over here, if this was our linear fit over here, then this red line, this wiggly red line is our polynomial fit. And as we start increasing the order for order of our polynomial, the model becomes more complex. And the way to identify if a model is complex is to keep an eye on these weights. So when the model has high bias and it is very simple, these weights are rather small, um, but as you start adding more polynomials or even uh, you have multicollinearity, these weights become very, very high. Um, and that's how we define uh, complexity or that's how we can track complexity. The, in case of linear regression, 
the way we can get around that is penalizing these uh, weights. Uh, and the way we do that is using lasso and ridge regression. So again, in case of uh, linear regression, we have the total error, uh, mean squared error, is root sum of square, which is again, um, those all those squares that we earlier talked about. And then model complexity multiplied by penalties. All we are saying here is that we want to penalize um, or regularize this model complexity. Um, and this model complexity, as I said earlier, is tracked by uh, how high those weights are or the coefficients uh, become. And there are two ways uh, to do that. One is if we use lasso regression um, or ridge regression. In case of lasso regression, these weights, the W1 or the B1 that we talked about earlier, we just sum them up. Um, and if that number is very high, then we know um, it's, it's a complex model. In case of ridge regression, however, we square these terms, all of these terms, um, and then calculate the complexity. And uh, mathematically speaking, or statistically speaking, um, if we just use a order one, then it's L1, uh, L1 penalty. And if we use two, it is L2 penalty. If we use three, uh, then it's L3 penalty. It's just a norm of a vector. Um, so one or two are called norms, and it's just a norm of a vector. And the way it uh, works uh, in penalizing is, I can give you an example. So let's assume we have these B1 and B2, and we start off with B1 plus B2 is equal to 100, and B1 is 75, and B2 is 25. Then we add this lambda term, lambda being our penalty term, um, times B1 plus B2 um, is equal to 100 is our new equation. If I choose this lambda is equal to 1, then it's 1 times 75 plus 25, 100. If I do increase that penalty on lambda to be 25, now to keep this number 100 the same, uh, the weights will have to go down. So now the new weight is 3 and 1. If I increase it even further, the penalty is now 99. And to keep the number the same, 100, remember we are trying to minimize all of this uh, at the same time. So when I increase it to 99, the coefficient becomes 0.76 and 0.25. So it has now come down from 75 all the way down to 76 and 25 to 0.25, um, just as an example. So that's what we essentially we are trying to do. By increasing these, by assigning a lambda value um, to these, penalty, uh, uh, to these um, weights, we are trying to reduce uh, the uh, reduce uh, these model uh, by this model complexity. So as the lambda value, um, when the lambda value is zero, uh, then if we come back over here, if the lambda value is zero, then this whole term goes away, and then we just have RSS. And RSS is are just um, a good old old uh, linear linear regression, uh, old least squares regression. Um, so there is just, you know, our linear regression, there is nothing to it. But as we start increasing the penalty, as you can see, to compensate for uh, the increase in the penalty and so as to minimize the whole cost function, uh, these, um, uh, these weights start uh, to go down. Now we can look at this visually, we can look at this um, over here. So we have... Uh, zoom in here so we have b1 plus b2 um, and if we plot b1 plus b2 we get this kite uh, or diamond shape and this diamond shape is called an error surface so if i go to google for example and just say plot x plus y this is in 3d but if we look down because z is zero you'll say you'll see we get um, a, the diamond so this is our uh, error surface. So this diamond is nothing but this x plus y that we have over here. So on, the, and we are considering only two dimensions. So we have b1, so feature one has a weight of b, b, uh, beta one, feature two has beta two, and this is, um, these vertices, these are, this is nothing but the 100 that we talked about earlier. This beta is our, 
um, lasso or rather the OLS, just the linear uh, uh, or, or uh, it's just the weighted uh, coefficient from the linear regression that we have. Now, as we start adding the penalty, um, we saw that the beta values or these weights start going down. And it keeps on increasing, keeps on increasing, increasing, increasing until this constraint surface or the error surface or the error envelope, as they call it, it approaches that and it touches um, these this vertices. Again, remember, this has to be 100. So it can only be 100 if it either touches this point over here or it touches this point over here. And now what happens when it touches over here, beta 2 is 100 and beta 1 becomes 0 at this point. Or if it increases in such a way that it touches this vertex first, then beta 1 is 0 and beta 2 um, uh, beta 1 is 100 and beta 2 uh, is 0. Uh, so that's how this works. And what happens uh, when we are doing all of this is, um, as you can see, um, RSS is again our linear uh, regression, error from the linear regression. We are adding some penalty and we are adding more to the weight. So if we consider it in terms of bias variance trade-off, as we add the penalty, our bias starts, um, bias increases. And, but at the same time, our model complexity um, starts to uh, go down. So model complexity is now uh, going down um, and which means our variance is uh, decreasing. And then after a certain point, uh, we don't get anything more out of it. Um, so the whole point of doing this is uh, to increase the bias um, and then reduce uh, the variance um, uh, as much as we can. Uh, then oh, what happens in case of ridge regression, for ridge regression we are using the L2 penalty. Uh, again if we go back to our plot over here um, and then do x square and over here do y square. This is nothing but an equation of a circle. So this is in 3D, that's why you see it like this, but if you look down, you'll see a circle. Um, so our error surface in case of ridge regression is, uh, ridge regression is a circle. Now, we discussed the scenario when our, uh, we start penalizing these weights. So as it increases, now again, we are looking for this um, cont uh, this error surface over here, right? So as it increases, it does not actually, it may touch this vertex, but it is highly likely that it will touch this surface first, the, somewhere over here or here. And in that case, the beta one and beta two um, are non-zero. So it goes down from, you know, it was somewhere over here um, and then it has shrunk so that's why it's called a shrinking uh, mechanism. Uh, it has shrunk down from you know somewhere over here to all the way down to this value over here. Uh, so in case of ridge regression, we don't necessarily go all the way down to zero. It can go down to zero if we, if this contour surface expands in a way that it touches over here. But it's more likely that it will touch, uh, you know, any anywhere else other than these four points. If it does at those four points, then the other uh, weight will go down to zero, um, or shrink to zero. So the benefit of um, using lasso regression is, in case of lasso regression, the co the coefficients of some of these um, uh, predictor terms they go. Uh, shrink to zero. So it, it can, that can be used for feature selection purposes. Whereas in case of ridge regression, they shrink, signif shrink down significantly, but they don't necessarily go down all the way to zero. They may, but they will likely uh, just shrink uh, down uh, by quite a bit. Now in, in higher dimensions, so if we had three uh, variables or three features, that uh, diamond uh, becomes a rhombus. Um, so it works the same way 
it starts increasing and then touches the vertex and then when it does that that particular variable becomes one or hundred and the other two become zero depending on where we touch it but the surface would be in higher dimension this would be much more complex uh, than this um, yeah if we use higher norm so a norm being this l1 and l2 that we talked about um, so if we use the higher norm uh, q raised to four so if we go here and then change it to for the this error surface starts becoming more funky um, yeah it's possible but then th it does not work we don't get much by using higher norm there are methods that use higher norms q thousand norms but um, that's very uh, that's not very common um, so that's what happens when we use uh, linear regression uh, with lasso and ridge so the benefit of using lasso regression is feature selection um, and but if the features are collinear, lasso regression is a greedy algorithm. So it will drop one of those uh, features that uh, that is collinear, and there is no way to tell which one it will drop. So if you have x1 and x2 that are highly collinear with each other, um, in one iteration it might drop x1, in the other iteration it will drop x2. Doesn't matter which any way other because. Um, anyway, it's um, the two features are collinear co with each other, so it doesn't really matter which one we pick. Uh, but just keep that in mind um, that it's a greedy algorithm, so it will drop you know one of the two. In case of lasso ridge regression, this multicollinearity is treated uh, rather than feature selection, so the features shrink down. Uh, but if you have highly collinear features, then ridge regression is used. And the way ridge regression works is um, if there are um, multicollinear features, then they will just shrink, uh, but they don't necessarily go down to zero. And in case of ridge regression, we have higher bias, but the variance uh, goes down. If we want the best of both, uh, you can use elastic net. Elastic net, so again, this is lasso. This is the blue line is... Um, ridge regression and then in between these two is uh, elastic net um, so elastic net regression gives uh, best of both worlds um, and in fact uh, um, if you use python for example it's in fact extremely easy to use um, the the real uh, 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 i guess in in terms of model creating the model we have to find these lambda values um, that you know which lambda value will minimize the error the most <clears throat> if you use python in case of elastic net it does that automatically for you uh, for both l1 and l2 um, and it's really easy to use and if you're trying to use linear regression both uh, classifier order regression um, you can use elastic net as your first go-to method and it's really versatile and gives you excellent results uh, that can be generalized easily. So just wanted to hope this helps you and just wanted to make a quick video uh, on this. Thank you.